One of the things about learning hard mathematics, like analysis or topology or abstract algebra, is that you want to think about examples. You want to know what are the key examples in those areas. In particular, you want to know what are the pathological examples, examples that kind of defy what you expect. So in this video, I'm going to show you two books that you can buy and basically put on your bookshelf so that when you need to find some strange examples, or if you're just curious and you want to explore some strange mathematics, these books actually have strange mathematics. They actually have math that is considered pathological and strange. Also, these books are really affordable and that's why I own both. I've had these for years and I'll be honest, I've only used them a couple times, but for the money, it was worth it. The first one I wanna show you and we're gonna take a look at this book in this video in a little while. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna show you the contents. It's counterexamples in analysis. So if you are taking analysis as an undergrad or advanced calculus as an undergrad, same thing. You wanna have a copy of this book on your bookshelf because it has strange examples. And if you know some calculus, you'll probably be able to understand uh, at least some of the examples that we look at later in this video when we open up this book and take a look inside. This book is inexpensive because it was published by a company called Dover and their books are really cheap. They're not expensive. So awesome book. It's by Gelbaum and Olmsted. It's got amazing examples, which we'll look at in a minute. Now, this is not a book you buy to learn analysis. It doesn't work that way. If you want to learn analysis, there's other books you can get. I recommend the one by Abbott uh, or the one by Cummings or Fitzpatrick, Buck. There's plenty of good analysis book. This is a supplement that you buy that gives you those strange examples. And it's important to know those examples, at least the really important ones, the, the big ones, you know, the ones that you, know, you need to know. A, a good example is the harmonic series. And we'll talk about that one a little bit later in this video. The other book I wanna show you later in this video is Counterexamples in Topology. Same thing, if you're taking a topology class, it's really important that you at least are aware of some of these examples, and this book has those examples. So both of these books are awesome. I will leave links in the description of this video in case you wanna check them out. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of these books so you can see some actual strange mathematics. Let's do the video backwards. Let's start with the more complicated, more advanced book, then we'll go to the analysis book, which you can probably relate to a lot more. So this one is called Counterexamples in Topology, it's by Lynn Arthur Steen and J. Arthur Seaback Jr. It's published by Dover. That means it's relatively inexpensive. And it's one of the reasons that I purchased this book when I was taking topology. Now, did I use this book a lot? No, not really. I use it sometimes and it's been sitting on my bookshelf for over a decade, but it's good to have in case you ever want to look up some strange examples. Let's take a look at the contents, basic definitions. So we've got limit points, closures and interiors, countability properties, functions and filters, separation axioms, regular and normal spaces, completely Hausdorff spaces, completely regular spaces, functions, products, and subspaces, additional separation properties, compactness, I'll go a little slow here so you can read it, connectedness, let's turn the page, metric spaces, that's probably something you might have heard of or seen, and then here we have some counterexamples, the finite discrete topology, the countable discrete topology, uncountable discrete topology, the indiscrete topology, that's probably one you've heard of if you've studied topology. And again, this is not a book to learn topology from. It's simply a book that is filled uh, with counter examples, examples of strange things that basically defy intuition. So if you are you know, taking a topology course, I think this is one of those books that's just worth having on your bookshelf. And if you're not taking a topology course and you know some topology, then it's still probably worth it. Now, if you don't know topology or you're not there yet, then it's probably not a good idea to, you know, have this book. But I mean, I guess you could have it so that when you learn topology, you have it. <laughs> so, and again, I haven't used this book that much. I've had it for over a decade. And it's something I bought because I saw it on Amazon and I'm like, wow, the price is really good. It's got really good reviews. Oh, look, Hostorb's metric topology. The post office metric, I remember that one. Metrization theory, and then there's some appendices. Yeah, really cool. Let's take a look at some of the examples in this book. You can see this is a serious math book, so you do need to know topology to understand some of this stuff. There's Miller's biconnected set. Wheel without its hub. Tangora's connected space. So just really strange math 
bounded metrics. This is one you've probably seen or at least heard of if you've taken a topology class. Sierpinski's metric space. I actually have a book written by Sierpinski, which is really, really cool. It's kind of nice to have a book written by someone uh, such that, you know, their name, you know, they have their name associated with something in mathematics. It's like Hostorf. I have Hostorf's books on set theory, which is pretty cool. Duncan's space. There's Hostorf, <laughs> Hostorf's metric topology. Yeah, it's a pretty cool book. Perfect if you are taking topology and you just want a reference that has these strange examples because you never know when you're gonna need to look them up. Perhaps the more relatable book is this one here, Counterexamples and Analysis. This is by Bernard R. Gelbaum and John M. H. Olmsted. And again, it's a Dover book, so it's really inexpensive. This one has things you've probably seen, even if you know basic calculus, you will be able to understand a lot of the things in this book, which I think make this one uh, more worthy of a purchase than the other one if you just know calculus. So here it talks about the real number system, so it has some stuff involving that. And then it talks about functions and limits. A nowhere continuous function whose absolute value is everywhere continuous. Cool. A bounded function having no relative extrema on a compact domain. An irrational function, a transcendental function. Let's turn the page, see what else we have here. This one has, again, things you might not imagine. Two uniformly continuous functions whose product is not uniformly continuous. All kinds of stuff in this one. A discontinuous linear function. Then here we have differentiations. It's broken up in a nice way. A function that is not a derivative. Let's look at that one really quick. That's page 35. Let's just see what that one is. Or rather 35, yeah, page 35. So page 35 is gonna give us a function that is not a derivative. The signum function, or indeed any function with jumped us continuities has no primitive. That is, it fails to be the derivative of any function since it fails to have the intermediate value property enjoyed by continuous functions and derivatives alike. Ah, yes, that is true. An example of a discontinuous derivative is given next. So let's turn the page. And then here we have a differentiable function with a discontinuous derivative. This is interesting. This is actually a function that um, I used to have a test question on one of my calculus tests that involved this question, which is kind of fun. And I didn't get the problem from this book. It's just something I had seen in another book. So it's kind of fun. You can find strange things uh, in books like this when you need to find them. Go back to the contents, Riemann integration. Let's turn the page here, see what else we have. Nice, very nice. A divergent improper integral that possesses a finite Cauchy principle value. Wow. Here we go, bounded divergent sequences. Sequences, and then we have infinite series, those are fun. A divergent series whose general term approaches zero, would that be the harmonic series? So these are things that even, even um, as a calculus student, you might want to know these. When, I, when I've taught Calc 2 in the past, uh, I didn't do it always, but I would give true-false questions surrounding uh, some of the concepts regarding infinite series, and students would have to uh, know a lot of the theory regarding that. It's a little bit hard. I wouldn't make it the whole test, but it definitely forced some really you know, deep understanding Uniform convergence. Then we have sets and measures, measure on the real axis. So much content, right? So much content in this book. Let's look at some specific examples further in this book. Here's an easy example. So you see not everything in this book is hard. A power series convergent at only one point. So the series here, the sum from zero to infinity of n factorial x to the n, converges for x equals zero and diverges for x not equal to zero. And that's pretty easy to see. You can use something like the ratio test to see that it's only gonna converge uh, at the center, right? It's gonna converge only at zero. Every power series will converge at its center. This is a power series centered at zero, so it converges at zero. The special thing about this one is that it only converges at x equals zero and it diverges when x is not zero. So it makes it a little bit different, but every power series will always converge at its center. Here's the famous harmonic series I was talking about earlier. It's a divergent series whose general term approaches zero. 
So what that means is if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, you're going to get 0. And why that's important is because if you have an infinite sum and you take the limit of the general term and it's not 0, the series diverges. That's often called the nth term test or the nth term test for divergence. So you might think, well, what happens if it's 0? If it's 0, it should converge. That's not true. This is a counterexample. This is an example of an infinite series such that if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of the general term, you're going to get 0, but, but the series actually diverges. So that's what is meant by a counterexample. Examples that defy intuition. Examples that, you know, you think they might be true, but they're not. And that's what makes this book so wonderful because it gives you those types of problems. These are two books that you can use to find those counterexamples that you sometimes need in mathematics. Again, the first one is counterexamples in analysis, and the other one is counterexamples in topology. Both of these are excellent books, and they're good to have on your bookshelf if you're studying these topics. I think that, in my personal experience, this one has been more beneficial, probably because I've studied more analysis than I've studied topology. I've taken a lot of courses on analysis and only a few on topology. So, yeah, great books. If you are new here, consider hitting the subscribe button. So, do that if you want to. Also, I do have math courses for sale on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathbids.com, or you can use any of the links in the description of any of my YouTube videos. The courses are for sale on the Udemy website, but please use my links if you decide to check out my courses. I have courses on pretty much all areas of basic math and a couple advanced courses. I do have one on analysis. Also, if you use Instagram, check it out, The Real Math Sorcerer. Until next time, I hope this video has been helpful. These are pretty good books, but remember, they're supplements and they're affordable. Go do some math.